What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, continuing on the Soulbound Reward Card Deep Dive series. We have already covered Fire, so if you're looking for that, uh, check out a previous video. In this video, we are going to cover the Water Splinter. And again, I'm, I'm recording this about a day or two after it. Uh, the cards have hit the Mav server, and uh, there's already been significant changes. So hopefully there won't be any more significant changes, but if there are, obviously everything is subject to change based on the team uh, wanting to balance things out. So we're going to start from, uh, actually we're going to start from the summoner and then work our way from the bottom up. So the summoner for water gives you a plus one health uh, and the conscript ability. And for those who might be new, the conscript ability allows you to play a gladiator in a ranked battle or a tournament or whatever, right? So wherever you can use this summoner, if you have a gladiator card eligible, then you're able to play that if you want to, you don't have to. But uh, the plus one health, it's not really super meta in my opinion. Plus we just had the, we just had Possibilis come out that gives you a plus two health. So, you know, I, I don't look at the water monsters as necessarily weak. I don't know if plus one health would have been what I would go for. But then again, you look at someone like Kelly who has plus one armor and plus one speed. Both of those are super meta and very valuable right now. So you don't want to do like something like that. But, um, you know, plus one health. It's okay. It's not amazing. It's okay. That being said, one of my favorite gladiators is uh, is, Gold, is Isvald. Oh, gosh, I can't remember his name now. Let's see if I can find him. Uh, he is, is called, is called Vorst. He is one of my favorite gladiators to play with overall. So I think that the summoner for water can be very valuable because even at the lowest levels, that dude is called Vorst is quite a beast. Uh, so in that, in that sense, I think Pembroke is going to be very much or very highly desired. Okay. So let's go, whoops, not fire. Let's go to the common cards now. Uh, and we have two of them. We'll start with Swamp Splitter, a, and this is a ranged monster, seven mana, two damage at the lowest levels, right? Let's, let's go ahead and jump ahead to, uh, max for bronze. But what's nice about this card is the repair ability. Now, currently, again, I'm looking at Chaos Legion only forward, Within these support monsters, and I know I know there's Junker out there, but I don't have my Junker leveled up. But within these support monsters, especially at the lower levels, um, you know nothing beats Murdali Guardian, where you get both a tank heal and a um, and armor repair. But let's say it's a game with healed out, for example, um, and you only need something like armor repair. Well, you could use Scabo Hireling, but it's three mana and you don't have an attack, so maybe you don't want to waste a spot and you want to have a little bit more offense. Well, Swamp Splitter comes in, and at seven mana, right off the bat, you're able to do two damage, two speed, and get that repair ability, which goes super well with Kelia, with um, with Kelia, with Lux Vega, with Venari Wavesmith, right? There's, there's a lot of use cases for this card right off the bat, and I think it's going to be a popular one. Now, as you get higher, max for silver, you get an increased speed, increased damage, a little bit more health. Actually, no, you're back up at five health. Uh, but it is in gold where you get the giant killer ability. And I, I think that I think that this card, uh, this ability is going to become, it's not necessarily underrated now, but I think it's going to become much more prevalent uh, and much more, you, uh, you'll have much more utility with it as we get a lot more of these higher mana cards. So the thing is, if you're playing him at seven mana, it's probably going to be a higher, like mid to high mana game, which means that the presence of uh, giants could be there, right? So I think at, at uh, gold, this card really starts to get great in my opinion. Um, and then you get that, fourth speed with a giant killer and then finally maxed out only six health so it's not you know the biggest or or, or chunkiest um it does look like a ninja turtle though <laughs> now that i look at it uh and you get that fourth damage for four speed again an awesome support card i think i really like it just for that alone because it has a little bit of offense now speaking of giants coastal sentry is a giant and this thing is an absolute beast so at level one, so right off the get-go, and this is a common card, so I expect everybody to have this card probably within the first week, um, you know, of, of you playing because it's, it's going to be one of the one of the most common to drop, pun intended, of course. Um, now you get for 10 mana, it, it's almost like Grund if you think about it, right? Like it's three, <laughs> it's exactly like Grund. You're doing three damage, three speed, six health, uh, and it has armor on it. 
this card is going to be this card is going to be outrageous. Now it is going to be susceptible to the giant killer, which we just saw um, the other card have, but that again is only coming in at the highest of levels. So, or actually no, that's gold plus. But once you get it to maxed silver, I mean, this thing has an increased health. This thing has increased speed. This thing has increased attack. I mean, you're doing four damage twice, so that's eight damage total per turn. It's going pretty fast. Uh, I mean, this this is a card I really like. And then. To make things even more OP, check this out. You get Pierce, or the Piercing ability, which is very clutch for someone like, or someone in the Water Splinter, if you're probably going to be going up against a Venari Wavesmith team, or a uh, Kelia team, or even a Lux Vega team. There, There's a lot of utility with this card, and I think being able to level this up... Um, is going to be awesome. And of course, once you get to the highest levels, you get that fifth speed, fifth attack. <clears throat> uh, it's still at seven health, but you do get the knockout ability. And I know there's some, there's some stun in, uh, there's some stun in water, but I don't know that I would necessarily play this for the knockout ability necessarily, but still that's 10 damage, 10 mana, 10 damage pierce. You're not going to beat that at the higher levels. I think this is going to be an absolute beast coastal sentry. Okay, let's move up to the rare cards. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just going to take a sip. So we got the Riverboat Captain. And so, again, the other rare card is the um, is the Summoner. So we got the Riverboat Captain here, six mana. Right off the bat, you get two magic damage and blast. Now, only four health um, and a speed of one. So he actually is great for reverse speed rule sets, if you think about it, because he'll be one of the first to go. Um, and that blast ability is nice. You're doing two damage, you know, one, uh, sorry, three damage per turn, one, two to the main target and one to the blast target, as long as there's no reflection shield. Um, he does get slightly faster, maxed for bronze, but again, that kind of hurts. That that kind of hurts in the sense that you don't want, you know, you, you want somebody who's like perfect for reverse speed. Now he's getting, he's getting worse for reverse speed and he's not necessarily great for every other game out there. Uh, but again, the blast ability is nice. Where I think this one gets interesting is the affliction ability. So now at level four, which is maxed for silver, the affliction ability is super clutch, especially when you could have potentially Bach Jiro on the other side. Because if you're, if you're able to play water, your opponent might be playing water. So this would give you an opportunity to have affliction, especially if you don't have, like, let's say it's a non-neutral game and you don't have access to someone like a Dr. Blight, right? Which is what my go-to for affliction. So again, I, th I think this card gets a lot of utility at the silver level. At the, at the gold level though, now all of a sudden you're doing way more damage because your main damage is up to three, which means your blast damage is now up to two. So instead of doing three damage, you're actually up to five. So your, your damage is up significantly from there, 60%. 66% whatever it is um, and then at the highest levels I think this one is cool too with all of the taunt abilities out there the fury ability comes in super clutch uh, so again it's not great at the lower levels uh, but I think it does have a specific utility in which you can use it or at least look to it once you get 25 bcx and again this is a rare card I don't know how quickly we'll get to 25 bcx but um, you know hopefully we will Okay, here is your epic card now. Now, this one is five mana, and keep in mind, all of the epic cards have no attack, uh, but they are ripe for the weapons training ability, potentially. So right off the bat, I mean, I mean this dude has a speed of six, no other just, has a speed of six, and you get the rust ability. Again, I've been talking about the rust ability quite a bit, uh, especially when we were doing the fire videos. So this thing is clutch because now you can play... You know, you can play, um, I've, I've always been looking for someone like Possibilis to play Rust with because you're probably going to go up against Kelia or maybe Lux Vega or maybe Venari Wavesmith. So you have this right off the bat, I think in level one, that could be very, very valuable. Now you throw him up as a tank or something like that. He, you know, at level at level one, four, four, um, four armor and five health with a speed of six, makes for a decent meat shield up front. And then at level three, which is max for silver, you get the dodge ability. Ooh, that could get real fun. The dodge ability, and then max for gold, you get an extra health, but you also get the backfire ability. I, he's perfect, actually, for... Um, I would say he's perfect as a tank for non-magic games. If you know you're not going to have a magic game, I mean, it, it just it makes him a great, great support card. And then, finally, when he dies you get the martyr ability at maxed. So 
up until you get to max level. I think he makes for a great uh, meat shield or, or tank if you need to throw a tank in there. But once you get the martyr ability, you want him to be sandwiched between two monsters that can benefit from that ability. So the thing is, how do you make sure that he dies before others do? Well, you could still throw him in the tank position so that uh, other teams need to go for him. But let's actually see what the weapons training ability offers. And that is Kulu Mastermind. Now, actually, you know what? Never mind. I would I would probably just keep him in that uh, in that front spot because you can throw Kulu Mastermind behind. And from the get go, you got the weapons training ability. So you're going to give him to attack, give uh, Noah to attack. And Kulu can still attack from that secondary position by offering, but with the opportunity ability. So, dude, Kulu Mastermind, this this dude's kind of nuts if you think about it. I mean, five speed, so super fast, nine health. It's eight mana, so it's not a cheap amount. But imagine being able to pair him up with someone like Deep Lurker and, um, man, I mean, Deep Lurker, Possibilis, and uh, River Hellendale. I mean, he can do some serious damage. Uh, and, and Noah, right? So to, to take away the armor of your opponent. Now you get the shield ability at level two, which I think comes in clutch. Uh, I don't think we have any, we don't have any current monsters for water that, that have the shield ability. Um, you get an additional damage. So you're doing eight mana, four damage again, opportunity, which I think is really clutch. And then at the highest levels you get enrage, which could make things absolutely insane. So uh, I'm really, I really like this legendary. I actually really like the way that it pairs with the epic card with Noah, uh, because again, you you could keep, you could keep this dude, especially if you have backfire, right? You could keep him in the back if you wanted to, or somewhere in the middle, um, and then just throw a bunch of giants around him, because then the opportunity monsters will be aiming for for Noah the Just, right? So again, lots of different ways to play it. All right, the final one, Musa Selene. This is the final legendary card. This is only three mana. I like that. We need to see more awesome lower mana cards. Now let's see if it's actually awesome though. So for three mana, you get one magic attack, three damage, three health. It's just okay. You do get the scavenger ability, which I think is valuable in certain contexts. Um, but it's in the level two, so max for silver, where you get the shatter ability. Now, um, Ice Pixie is one of Darkest Knight's favorite card because it has that shatter ability. And not only do you get shatter, but you get an additional speed. So now you're able to shatter uh, the, your, your opponent's um, armor and you're a little bit faster. It's still one damage. When you get to the higher levels though, shatter and dispel. Again, I think dispel is gonna come in really, really handy, especially against you know, monsters that have weapons training, for example, uh, if you want to remove that additional attack from them. So that's going to be, that's going to be super clutch, especially at gold. And then you do get that second attack at the higher levels. But I think this makes for a really interesting support card. Again, it's very offensive in many ways, right? Because of the shatter as well as the dispel. But uh, overall, I, I think, you know, it's, it's not going to win games by itself. I don't think not like a Dr. Blight, but it can, be a very solid support card that goes, you know, with with a speed of four, uh, could potentially go before some of your larger monsters or your tanks or whatever to shatter that armor before you get started. So lots of good stuff from the water team. I mean, I'm I'm feeling really excited about this. There's a lot of great pairings with the new cards as well as some of the older cards in the meta. Uh, so overall, I think. I th <laughs> I'm just excited. I think there's going to be a lot of fun stuff with the water splinter if there isn't already. So that is all I have for you with water. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, I will catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.